LSU versus South Carolina. LSU is currently a seven-point favorite going into this game. And what's really fascinating about this matchup is that you got an LSU offense that's really explosive. And you got a top 10 offensive line with two offensive tackles that are going to be playing in the NFL next year. They're going to be future first round picks. Left tackle Will Campbell is probably the best offensive tackle in the country. And right tackle Emory Jones Jr. isn't too far away from him as well. Garrett Nussmeyer is a tough quarterback, handles pressure really well, has a really good arm. You got dynamic wide receivers and Kyron Lacey. You also got tight end Mason Taylor. But you're going up against a South Carolina defense that is really formidable, especially with what they have on their defensive line. And a matchup that you need to look out for in this game is South Carolina's true freshman pass rusher, Dylan Stewart, who already has two and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and two games up to this point in his career. And this dude was just playing in high school last year. And this dude is an insane athlete. He's like Jadavion Clowney reincarnated. Well, he's going to be going head up against offensive tackle Will Campbell on that left side. They also have a couple of other really good is rushers. They got a lot of depth on the interior of their D line. So with the athletic ability that South Carolina possesses with their front seven and on that D line, they can get pressure by either rushing for or sending the house when they want to send extra guys with the blitz. And they also got a secondary that's pretty experienced. And as a defense, the Gamecocks have four, six turnovers in the span of only two games. I don't see this being a cakewalk for LSU due to the lack of consistency that South Carolina's offense has at being able to sustain drives and put points on the board. This is a defensive team, and the defense is going to carry the way for South Carolina for this season until we see more out of Lenora Sellers. And the good thing is, for Lenora Sellers, still being fairly young into his career, he has a lot of room to grow, and it seems like he's getting better every game against Old Dominion, outside of what he was doing on the ground. He didn't really look too impressive throwing the football. Against Kentucky, he had a couple of big throws that he made, but still wasn't really that good. But with him having Rocket Sanders in the backfield and a pretty decent group of wide receivers, South Carolina has the ability to get big plays, and crucial moments of the game. And this is a big play-dependent offense. They're not efficient. They only convert on third downs 28.57% of the time. That's currently one of the worst in college football. And they only average 3.9 yards per play. So that shows you that this is, the, this is an offense in South Carolina that they may not be efficient, but they do have the ability to generate big plays and certain moments during the game to still put enough points on the board to make this a close game. And against Kentucky, what blew that game open was how dominant their defensive line is. This is probably one of the better defensive lines that LSU is going to face offseason. South Carolina's coaching staff has been raving about the talent that they've had on this defensive line all offseason. They believe that this is the best defensive line that this program has had in recent memory, and they're going to get tested against the top 10 offensive line in LSU. And if they meet that challenge, they got a great chance of being able to win this game due to them having home field advantage as well. And Shane Beamer is no slouch as a head coach. Some of y'all seem to forget what the Beamer boys did the last month of 2022 when they beat Tennessee, ended their playoff hopes, ended Hendon Hooker's Heisman bid as well. And in the following week, they crashed Clemson. The Beamer boys are not one of those squads that you want to overlook just because you have to perceive talent advantage. And I got concerns about LSU's defense still. Yeah, South Carolina offensively, isn't that great? Their offensive line has struggled. Lenore Sellers is a good runner, but he's not that good of a passer. Well, LSU's defense, are they going to be able to slow down South Carolina's run game? We've yet to see 
Rocket Sanders go off. We know how good Rocket Sanders is. He's been one of the best running backs in the SEC for the last two years. And LSU's defense still hasn't shown me enough to the point where they can be trusted to just completely neutralize South Carolina's rushing attack in this game. Yeah, you do have Harold Perkins, and he should have a monster performance with him going up against a poor offensive line. He's a cyborg. I'm still very high on Harold Perkins. I still perceive him to be a future first-round pick if he declares for the draft next year. Defensive coordinator Blake Baker, who they got from Missouri during this offseason, his defense still has a lot of work that they have to do. With how they played against Nickel State in the first half, Nickel State had two seven-minute drives, and they were able to hold their own when it came to town possession. So if Nickel State is moving the ball against your defense and you're allowing 20 points against them, there's a path to South Carolina offensively being able to stay in this game with how they can run this football against a very questionable LSU defense. So the team I'm going to take to win this game, I like South Carolina with the upset. As absurd as that may sound, LSU doesn't have the ability offensively to run the football. And that's going to hurt them in this game because they're going to be too predictable. South Carolina is not one of those teams that you're just going to dice up through the air. We know that they have a formidable pass rush. And regardless of how good your offensive line is, South Carolina's defensive line is going to get back there at some points during this game due to the lack of unpredictability LSU is going to have in their play calling. When you know a team's going to throw the football every down, they can't run it against you, it allows those pass rushers to pin their ears back and to really just go all out at getting after the quarterback. And with the kind of freaks that South Carolina possesses on that D-line, regardless of how good these tackles are, somebody's going to end up breaking loose, getting a big hit on Garrett Nussmeyer, and that could be the difference in South Carolina winning this game because let's say it's late in the fourth quarter. They are in a fourth down situation late, and they need to get LSU off the field to get the ball back to their offense to win. I trust South Carolina's pass rush to get home at Nussmeyer. This is a really good defense that South Carolina has this year. They are experienced at all levels. And with the kind of freaks that they are possessing, like this true freshman that they have, Dylan Stewart, you know, I'm pretty confident that South Carolina's pass rush is going to be able to work LSU's offensive line, regardless of how good they are. Because when you're one-dimensional and you don't have the ability to play complementary football, you can have good receivers like Kyron Lacey. You can have a good tight end in Mason Taylor, but it doesn't matter when Garrett Nussmeyer doesn't have all day to throw the ball. And this is not an offensive line that I see being able to keep him clean for the entirety of this game. They're going to get home in, a certain, in certain situations. So that's why I'm taking South Carolina to get the win. 24-20 is my final score prediction for this game. Give me the Gamecocks at home.